Hey everyone, Board Game Brody here with Meeple Mountain. I have a fresh new copy of Get On Board, New York and London, a route building bus stop game by Aiello Games. And before we begin, I'd like to ask you if you can like this video and more importantly, subscribe to this channel. It's something easy for you to do and it really helps us. All right, and like usual, let's get right into this game. All right. Players play 12 rounds controlling their own bus, stopping at different destinations, forming their own bus line in town. Players will pick up students, tourists, and professionals who all need to be dropped off at certain locations. When you drop them off at those locations, you will score points. But the routes, the stops you take, and the order of those routes and stops will determine a large part of your score. Here's the game set up here. You will play the game in New York when playing with two or three players and in London when you have four or five players. Each player will have their own player sheet where they will keep track of who they pick up and the stops that they make. Each player will choose a color and they will place their route markers on the board following the setup and moving their buses during the game in several directions on the map. Just like in real life, you will continue where you last left off, so you will grow your line in one way only. After you start, you cannot go back and build off the other end of your route where you started, so one way only. Anyways, here is how a round works. There are 12 total bus tickets, and during setup you use these cards to help you figure out where you start on the map. But during the game, one is used for each round, and you will flip one over, and it will show a number from 1 to 12. Players will look at their player sheet and on the top they will find the card that was drawn. They will mark it off and see the route that is shown below it. There are straight lines, either one, two, or three long, or it could show a turn or two turns. If there is a slash, you can choose between the two options. So if you're performing a turn, you will place your markers to make a 90 degree turn. And it doesn't matter if you form a turn to the left or to the right, you get a pick. Now, when placing your markers, the first one might form a turn from your previous marker, but that doesn't count as forming a turn. The first marker never counts when comparing it to the one previously placed. It's all about the markers that you are placing on that turn. So the bus tickets, they tell you what pattern you will use. And this is different for each player, meaning someone could have a straight route while another player on the same round has two turns meaning they turn twice. So you will then take your 12 rounds in the game, making a route around the board. But after each marker that you place down, you'll perform its action at the spot located at the end of it. If it's a person, you'll pick them up, marking that on your player sheet. Or if you get to a drop-off location, you'll perform that action for it, dropping those people off there. And you know what, let's go over these locations because it's really the main part of this game. But before we do, the first thing I actually want to tell you about is about traffic jams. Players can share the road with others, but when you do this, it's considered driving through a traffic jam. Also on the New York map, there are some black roads which are permanent traffic jams. For each segment that you drive through that is considered a traffic jam, you will mark off a bus on the bottom of your player sheet starting with the top left bus and following the path down. The more traffic jams you drive through, the more negative points you will gain for in-game scoring. And some other rules when forming your route around the board, you can never double back on your own route that's very frowned upon with your fellow bus driver friends. It's considered inefficient. If you end up on the same intersection as one you've already visited, you are eliminated from the game and you score zero points. So you need to avoid that as well. But for that reason, you can also have a way to change your assigned route to a different one. If you want to either add a turn to your route or take away a turn or change a turn to a straight, always placing the same amount of segments on the board, you can. You will mark the first box on the top right of your player sheet. You will add negative points as you do this, but at times it might be better to take the negative points then get stuck and get eliminated from the game or move on the board stopping at places that might not add to your score the way that you want. Next. The green lights. If your route ends at a green light, you will place an additional marker in any direction. Wherever the marker ends will trigger its action again. Green lights don't add anything besides being able to move around the board quicker due to being able to place an extra marker down. And ultimately, it doesn't really add any additional actions. It just uses one and then gives you one. 
Okay, let's pick up some passengers. And again, remember you will activate each spot where your segment ends while you're placing those segments on the board. When picking up grandma, you will cross off the top available space. And the more you cross off over the span of the game, the more points are awarded for helping each of those grandmas. One and then two, and then later in the game, you might be getting three points for those. When picking up a student, you will cross off one of those spaces in that section. You will mark off one of the top six student spots when picking up from the board. And the bottom three are gained from a bonus that I will show you here in a little bit. You will also do the same when you end at a school. You will cross off one box for that school. At the end of the game, this section takes the number of students and multiplies it with the number of schools that you've visited. Next is professionals and tourists, which are similar in how they work in this game. You will cross off the space furthest left to the top row that doesn't have a parked bus marked, meaning in the row with the number in that rightmost space. If there is a number in the rightmost space, then you'll just begin marking on the next row down. Now, professionals want to be dropped off at office buildings and tourists want to go places to sightsee in which there are two types of sightseeing places, the light blue and the dark blue kind. When activating these locations, you will look at the row of the corresponding people you have marked without a parked bus. In that column, you will see a number shown. That is the number of points that you just scored by dropping that many of those people off at that location. And you'll write that number in on the rightmost space that has a parked bus. Professionals provide a bonus passenger in addition to points, and you will mark that person off at that time as well. If it's a student, that's where you will mark off one of the bottom students in that section. They're actually interns and can only be crossed off with this bonus action. But grandmas and tourists are all crossed off like normal. In the same row you wrote your score, if there are any spaces not crossed off, you will scribble those spaces off as they will no longer be used. You should know that there are two objective cards placed out each game, and these objectives focus on certain stops that you can make in the game. The first player to achieve the objective will write in those points on their player sheet, which is 10. All other players can still achieve those goals, but they will just receive a lower award as the card is flipped over. Those are six points. The last spot is where you can score 10 points if you fulfill your personal objective. Everyone will get one of those cards at the beginning of the game. And if you are able to connect your route to the three shown locations on the map, it will score you those additional 10 points. This goal should be performed while you also strategically choose which locations to go around at those points to get other things. After 12 rounds in the game, players fill in their score boxes on their player sheet, add everything together, and whoever has the highest score wins the game. And well, that's the game. Players will need to figure out the best way they can score the most points by fulfilling their personal objectives, by fulfilling the public objectives, and focusing on certain types of locations that either pick up passengers or drop them off. Each passenger scores differently and sometimes it might be more worthwhile to fulfill specific passengers over others depending on your location on the board and your current situation on your player sheet. And of course, you'll be juggling these decisions while also trying to figure out how you're gonna turn your route or drive straight for whatever card that is flipped over for that round. Sometimes it might be worthwhile to end your route on a green light to add one more segment to your route. While it's not beneficial to hit these green lights in the middle of laying down your segments because they don't add anything for you, while others will at least add potential to your score to score some more points at, somehow. Grandma is better than nothing, but gets more powerful if you keep picking more and more of them up. Students are better when you have lots and visited a lot of schools. Near the end of the game, getting to a school could be more worthwhile if it is if you have picked up like five students and then one more school is an additional five extra points where the most you can get from grandma is three points and that's only if you have picked up lots of them during the game already. The tourists and the professionals are different and more situational. Four tourists before dropping them off can get you 14 points, which is really good, but you're likely not going to be able to do that on each of the three rows. 
The professionals don't really give you a lot of points, just two points for each of them for dropping them off, but they can be used to unlock specific passengers that you are focusing on during your game. If you're focusing on a student and you have four schools visited, another student would be worth it, or a tourist that gets you to that 14 point mark, or lastly, if you get two points for one professional, but you also get a grandma passenger that doesn't even need to be dropped off, especially if you are in the three point area, that would be five points right there with no other additional planning or work that you need to be done, might be worth it. And as for your juggling all those things, you are also trying to plan out visiting your starred locations for each type, or at least for the strongest type that you really are focusing on. If you're playing the student strategy, then visiting Columbia or King's College, depending on the side of the map you're playing, can really give you some points or even better when doing a strong tourist strategy. Visiting one of the blue sightseeing spots later in the game can really benefit you, but you really wanna to try to visit these spaces later in the game for the areas that you are strongest with but still get a couple of points if you are visiting them early in the game, that's okay. Like I said, it's a juggling act of trying to fulfill so many different things and you only have 12 turns to do that. The most efficient player with a good strategy will most likely win this game. And doing that includes avoiding traffic jams, which can be hard when multiple players are making routes in the areas that you need to visit to fulfill your personal objective card or to make it to that starred location that you really wanna to get to. So I do enjoy this game. It makes me change course and keeps me on my toes as I play, but it also is hard to reward players who make a perfect plan but then cards just don't go their way. This is more of a game for people who like to think of their immediate choices right then and there, even taking into account that those immediate choices that they're doing might affect the long run of the game. Again, this game doesn't reward a player who forms a perfect plan at the beginning of the game and wants to see it through because it will not work. You usually have two or three choices, you place down your segment, then you choose from another two or three choices and make that choice and place down another segment. Little choices determine your strategy and you hope to do the most while making all of those little choices. For that, the game is not a mind bender and for me that's perfect for a game like this. This is a game where you chat while playing the game. You don't need to really do all too much when it's not your turn because your choices are only really done after you flip that ticket card over and see what you need to turn or, or where you need to go. Do you need to go straight, turn, whatever. The other thing that does this game good is that the turns are pretty quick. And so after that card is turned, although you take turns going around, usually you can start deciding on what to do because another player will only change your plans if you're currently or they're currently in the same location on the board blocking you. Players usually want to avoid other players as well, avoid traffic jams. So if this does occur, it will most likely only be for a turn or so. Anyways, we really like this game. We wish we could play with more maps, although it really would be a similar game if there was a different map. I wish the London map could be blocked in a way so you could also play it as a two to three player game. But I totally understand that it's just the names on the board, the areas, and that nothing else really changes from board to board. So it would still feel the same from map to map. But maps that change with a few of the new locations or do something special would be something very cool to see in the future. Anyways, you will need to get your CDL license ASAP and pick up passengers with your family and friends in Get On Board New York and London by Aiello Games. Again, this is Board Game Brody. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stick around and check out some other board game reviews to see what you might want to get to the table.